Mitochondria are the parts of the cells that make energy. So mitochondrial disorders are those disorders which are caused by a lack of enough energy for the cells to operate. And without energy, every part of the body is in trouble and every part of the body can show disease. There are varying levels of, of mitochondrial disease. There's one thing that they all have in common and that is at least part of the body doesn't have enough energy. If you've ever been in a city that had an energy brownout, it's the connection of the low energy supply and the high energy demand that causes the brownout. With mitochondrial disease, it's very similar to that. Anything which stresses the body or the mind can increase the requirement for energy. I was surprised to learn when Audrey was diagnosed, or when mitochondrial disease was first brought up as a possibility, how little I knew about it and how little any of the doctors that we saw day to day knew. I had been under the impression that it was something that only affected infants after birth and they were severely affected, they didn't live. Or the other extreme was that they had a special food, special diet that they fed and that was, they were fine. You probably haven't heard of mitochondrial disease because patients are rarely diagnosed with mitochondrial disease. They're diagnosed with diabetes, epilepsy, autism, mental retardation, and a hundred other conditions. He always had things that were not quite right. He was tiny. He was not strong. He didn't meet his mild stones. She was slow to walk, to crawl. She didn't really speak much. And he started having um, grand mal seizures. She had something that just seemed like about a food poisoning, but this went on for quite a few days. And I started having seizures where I would just lose minutes of time. Mitochondrial disease is probably the most common disorder that you've never heard of. Mitochondrial disease underlies many different conditions that you know about. She was actually born with uh, severe reflux. She was sleeping 20 to 23 hours a day. She was a weaker child. She was uh, less weight. She didn't have the same strength. She was hard to get to sleep. Um, as she got older, we start seeing developmental delays. She was really cranky and she would complain about owies in her legs. A doctor would say, oh, well, this is wrong with them, and they'd help that, and then we'd spring a leak over here and something else was going on. Mitochondrial disease is a very difficult concept because even the experts can't really agree on what it is. There are thousands of different mitochondrial disorders, some of them not so bad. They may just cause migraine headaches, fatigue, GI upset. They can have multiple problems with multiple systems of the body. you are completely helpless to do anything for your kid. You often get accused of things that you're just not guilty of as a parent. And it got to a point at one point where I was afraid to take them in to get care for them when they really needed it because of the responses of the physicians. When he was four, we were sent to a hospital that was not mito-friendly. And we didn't know that he had mitochondrial disease at that point. And one of the doctors there was very concerned because there was so much wrong with this child. We got a hold of an intern who did not understand, had never heard of mitochondrial disease, didn't understand, saw a baby at 18 months old with a file a mile and a half long and assumed that I must be hurting her. And so she decided that I was making all of it up for attention, which was enraging to me because I had a child who was ill and the medical community couldn't explain why he was ill and how all of these new symptoms were happening at once. So that started my journey with the writing every single thing down. Everything that I saw, everything that the doctors would say, everything that the emergency room would say, writing it down, trying to connect the dots because every physician that walked into the room, you know, I'm starting from scratch every single time. I think for years I've always been uncomfortable dealing with physicians as my child's mother since that happened. And so I think that that really delayed our diagnosis of mitochondrial disease. So finally we went to a, a couple neurologists and they said, well, we're not exactly sure what she has, but we're gonna call it um, cerebral palsy so you get services. And uh, the geneticist basically said, you know, your daughter's doing better, go away. We don't need to see you. They couldn't quite figure out what was going on and I would fit some of one thing and some of another thing. My younger life I was basically 
in the hospital for all my birthdays, all the major holidays, and months and months at a time. As time progressed, she was constantly in and out with uh, ailments, you know, testing different doctors. The neurologist did not want to actually diagnose her with anything specific, although he did lead to, at one point, he did lead into saying that she had uh, what he thought was CP or something related. But he actually never wanted to come out and say that because he really wasn't too sure. We did a muscle biopsy when it was looking like mitochondrial disease was more likely, which took nine months to get results back from. But it didn't show what was going to happen. We were hoping to get more guidance on how to treat her. The muscle biopsy showed some pathological changes in the mitochondria, but it didn't really give us an answer. With the complexity of mitochondrial genetics, until very recently, it was difficult to come up to an exact diagnosis in most cases. They, they say, you're going to see this, this geneticist. I'm like, uh, another doctor? <laughs> Great. And um, they said, yeah, you know, this doesn't happen twice unless there's a genetic reason. I started doing some reading, some research, and I thought, well, there is, there is some, she, this does look like her, her workup. By doing the nuclear testing or the cortigen testing, we were able to find out exactly what the problems were. The difference before and after this has been astounding in that many patients have improved dramatically. We were in the right place, the right time, and the right doctor, and we got a molecular testing, molecular mitochondrial testing. It, you know, reinforced what it was that we already knew, um, but then also gave us something more targeted to take a look at to see if there was anything we could do about it. We found out um, that there were other medications that we had been trying with him that were actually hurting him and that we should avoid. We've been able to start treatment that's kind of out of the box and not something that anybody would have considered um, if we hadn't done genetic testing. Yeah, targeted therapy has been a big difference in our family. She's always a loving person, but to actually say, hi, how's your day, how are you doing? To see that happen after targeted therapy, it's been significant. The, the technology now is uh, amazing, stuff that took two years to come up with, now we can do in two weeks. Oh, the testing was super easy. Compared to the muscle biopsy, it's like a no-brainer. It takes, you know, minutes. We got the kit, and um, we just filled out the paperwork, and then Haley just spit into a cup. It was really simple, and you just package it all up and send it in. All you do is spit in a tube. We actually had to do a blood draw on him, and a phlebotomist came out to our house. It was a very easy process. The, the testing itself, that you know, it was no problem. You just have to spit into the little tube and get it up to the line. Within days, I'm having a conversation with my son in a way that I could never have before. She's gone from sleeping 22 hours a day to sleeping 15 hours a day. She, her glucose is stable now, which has, it was always a problem before. She had a lot of low glucose. Um, and just her awareness, and she's learning more, her speech is better. Things have really definitely looked up for her. The day they started the IV medicine to treat one of the mutations in the hospital, Cameron um, was not well. The morning after, his gastroenterologist came into the room and saw Cameron sitting up and was stunned because he'd seen him collapsing in his office previous to this. I am so glad. I, I'm so glad. I am so glad. I wish I had had this when he was eight, but 18, 19, I'll take it. I'll take it. We'll see where we can go with it. It's just, uh, we can't get enough of the research can't get enough of the medicine that is specific for him because it's working and um, now I, I, I just feel now I, I have my son. To be quite fair, it doesn't change my image of myself at all because it's what I see as normal and considering it's an invisible disease, I simply feel like I'm normal. 
it gets easier. You still get to have friends, you still get to do many things that other people do, and it's annoying, it makes you think about certain things that you particularly don't want to. I was living life perfectly fine, and then here comes eighth grade year, and it's just like I got hit hard. I spent more and more time in the hospital. My sophomore year, I was only at school about 80 days of the school year, and was out the rest pretty ill. I was hospitalized almost every other month through middle school, and I had an aide that followed me around at school, and she also served so that when I was in the hospital and stuff like that, she would she would go to class for me and take notes for me and gather my schoolwork, and, which I think is why I was able to be successful through school. That was a great help. Well, I was often having episodes like every other month, and then it was every month, and then like basically every couple of weeks, which was really hard and scary because I had to be in a wheelchair from January to May of this past year. Luckily, I'm on a new medication that my doctor put me on and it's helped me almost have no, have no episodes for almost a year. Find someone who specializes in mitochondria disease because that is the key. You can't just go to any doctor, you can't just go to any neurologist because they're not going to know or specialize in it. Um, and really do your research. What type of mitochondrial disease does your child have? How will it affect them? Um, it affects everybody differently, so you can't just read a book. You have to be that advocate for your child. You have to be the, their voice. You really have to go out there and you have to find the answers. There are doctors who will believe you. It, everyone has different organs and systems affected and um, it's, it's great to meet people to have a support system because they understand. You can't compare children. You just have to be there for each other. That there is, that there are places to go for answers. There is a community of families and, and people who understand and can empathize and, and support. Pay attention to what your kids are saying because they're using the absolute words that are describing what is happening in their bodies. It may not make sense to you, but just repeat exactly what they're saying because they make so much sense even when it doesn't seem like they do. Have the cortisone test done. It's gonna help you understand exactly what your child has. I would do this test um, because I think it's given us information that's treatable for Cameron and I think it's been really helpful to us as a family. Knowledge is power. You may find a supplement that is specific to your child's defect which can greatly help them, so absolutely. Help where you can, donate where you can. Um, there is hope, there is hope.